We will now come back to Dr. Emilia Bunea. The floor is yours. Good evening again. My name is Emilia Bunea and I'm a leadership researcher. And I'm here to bring you a secret weapon, or rather secret armor, that can help future-proof your leadership. It all started with a woman I know well. Let's call her Clara. Some time ago, Clara was promoted to a very senior role at the Amsterdam headquarters of a global corporation. She had been a strong, if somewhat tough, leader in her previous role. And she arrived at headquarters with a clear vision for change and with the determination to implement it. But once there, everything she thought she knew about leadership was thrown into question. Which was a big blow, you see, because Clara was really passionate about her work. Before we continue Clara's story, I have to say that questioning one's own leadership is very common. I have led an 800-person organization. How good of a leader was I? I'm not sure. You can never get an accurate measurement of your own leadership. No matter how much formal or informal feedback you gather, or how many KPIs you hit. Yes, my team was happier than with my predecessor, judging by the engagement survey. But how much of that was me, and how much the big distribution agreement we had just struck? And would I have been as good a leader in a different context, or with a different team? The leadership identity is ambiguous and uncertain. Which is why, in research studies, we often find this combination. Passion for leadership, combined with ambiguity and uncertainty about it. And it's a combination we will see a lot more in the future workplace, as more and more leadership passion is needed, while leaders everywhere will have less formal power and more ambiguous, stormy environments to navigate. Why is this important to you as leaders in the future? Two reasons. First, according to psychologists, this particular mix, passion for something and feeling insecure about it, is perfect for brewing what's called obsessive passion. You want your passion to be harmonious, not obsessive. Obsessive passion for work is a recipe for burnout. And if you are a leader, it will burn out your employees too. So how do you avoid that? Have something else in your life, right? Another life role that can make you feel competent and can offer you personal growth and self-expression differently from the leader role. Second, continuously performing at high passionate leadership levels requires a huge energy expenditure. Researchers are finally admitting to it. For a long time, they believed that good leaders are simply energized by their followers. And they are, but the overall effect, day in, day out, the net effect of leading well is actually energy depleting. It's not going to get any better in the future workplace. If you are in the leadership business, you need to set up a powerful, renewable, source of energy outside of your work now. So what is the answer to both of these needs? For another life role, enriching life role, and for a powerful source of energy outside your work? Well, for many of us, the answer is our loved ones, partners, children, close friends. But for others among us, that's not true. That doesn't mean we love them any less. Clara loved her teenage daughter dearly. But being a parent did not satisfy these crucial needs for her. Competence, personal growth, self-expression. And that's the case for many leaders. And that's okay. If you think in terms of the Maslow pyramid of needs, over the past centuries, people's expectations of their families have gradually climbed up. Material needs, belonging, love, self-actualization. 
which explains why people are also more often disappointed today than ever before. As for energy, you know that for the relationship to flourish, sometimes you have to be prepared to give it more energy than you get. There is another answer to this question, and it's taking us back to Clara's story. Although her initial enthusiasm had waned, Clara was not one to give up easily. She persisted, working longer and longer hours, not getting any followership, not making any alliances. If anything, she seemed to alienate her co-workers. She was heading towards a wall. She had nightmares about falling short. It got to a point where she hated even stepping into the office. And then she started running. She had exercised regularly, but had never run before. Now she ran with a vengeance. Soon she was training for half marathons and then for marathons, dramatically improving her time from one to the next. Her daughter rolled her eyes, but eventually followed her. And the light started glimmering at the end of the tunnel as Clara started putting things into perspective. She found the wisdom to recreate her vision with her team. She took time to understand how people felt and what they actually needed. She remembered her playful and creative self. Clara's transformation as she started running was so dramatic that I decided to research it. I spoke with hundreds of leaders, from Fortune 500 CEOs to entrepreneurs. What emerged is a concept I now call sustainable personal passion. A sustainable personal passion is not just something you do, it's something you are. You are a painter, a singer, a cliff jumper, a creative knitter. It may seem small and humble, but if it makes you learn new things, if you feel you can express your true self through it, if it makes you proud, then it's true personal passion. This makes it both that other life role and a powerful source of energy. And because you don't have to force yourself to do it, you just can't wait, it's sustainable. Leaders who have sustainable passion are thriving. They are more creative and more energetic at work, but also more present with their loved ones. When times are tough, sustainable passion puts things into perspective and increases their resilience. You might be thinking, who has the time? I barely have time for my family as it is. It's difficult, indeed. This may help. This very simple but powerful formula was discovered by um, a visionary sociologist, Stephen Marx, half a century ago. Time equals energy. What actually limits people's investment in life roles is not time, but energy. And this is confirmed by recent experiments. When an energizing activity was introduced on a recurring basis, subjects not only found time for it, but actually felt like they had more time than before for work and family. Magic. Do you have sustainable personal passion? If yes, please write in the chat passion and what yours is. Or maybe you only have a hobby that's not a passion yet. Then please write hobby and what yours is. And let's see, if you have a hobby, how do you turn it into a passion? Let's say your hobby is cooking. First, invest in competence, becoming better and better at it. Second, let others know because they will channel resources and information your way. Third, find where you can be unique. It's usually a Venn diagram game. You might not be your country's best cook, but if you also have a great sense of humor, if you love putting up a show, and if you have lots of business experience, you might just be the only one with a successful weekly online show where you dole out business advice inspired by slow cooking, like legendary T-Mobile CEO John Ledger. If you don't have any idea what your passion might be, it makes sense to start by trying to optimize. 
you'll want to do to choose an activity that fills other needs too. Maybe sports you need to exercise anyway, or volunteering. Cigna CEO David Cordani has been running marathons, but also volunteers as a running guide for amputee athletes for over a decade now. Also, you might choose uh, something your loved one does, so you spend more time together. This is Adina Friedman, CEO of NASDAQ. She started um, Taekwondo because her son was doing it. Several years later, she's a black belt and is doing wonders for her resilience. Also, be patient. Nobody really loved their first skiing lessons or their first 50 bagpipes lessons. It takes time to build some competence so you can feel you enjoy it. But don't lie to yourself. Don't persist in something you don't really enjoy because it looks good or it's the right thing to do. Only true personal passion will create those psychological resources you need in order to give your team what they need from you. Last year, I produced a movie that tells Clara's story. It is used as a case study at business schools and leadership programs around the world. This is part of a widespread acceptance of sustainable personal passion as a leadership resource. Cultivate this passion, whether it's Krav Maga or beer making, singing, cooking, uh, dancing, cliff jumping, knitting, just go for it. The world needs leaders who will thrive no matter what the future throws at them. Thank you. Thank you so very much. Emilia for that inspiring talk. Uh, you know, th this was very uh, impactful for many of us, I'm sure. And I think that one question that we, we all have is, at least traditionally, um, the, the culture of play and, and um, mm, mm, arts and sports and being in nature and these things uh, seem to be something that takes away your seriousness as a leader. Uh, how, how do we, how do we, uh, you make a great case for it. After listening to you, I think we do not think like that. But how can you make a, a quick case to tell people that this is actually leadership enhancing and energizing and not diminishing, diminishing in any way credibility of leaders? It's a great question. Thank you. Um, there's a very good example I can answer with. George Barrett, former CEO of Cardinal Health, a huge um, medical corporation. He um, is a uh, CEO, he was a CEO, but also a uh, professional singer before his business life. And when he became CEO, he gave up on singing on stage in any sort of circumstance, even for charity, because he said, you know, I felt like I would be a bit of that walking monkey, you know, that, that everybody parades around and says, look at the CEO, he can also sing. And at some point, he, gave, he, he, he stopped. So he said, you know what, this is so important, it's so part of me that I have to show it. And he did participate in a show for charity, and his people loved it, and not just because they told him so. But you could see it, his, his, uh, the way he was perceived increased. Comments about him were richer because people thought, finally, you're showing us something vulnerable, authentic about yourself. And you know, you, you cannot really fake sustainable personal passion. I mean, either you are a singer or not. So, so, so it, it, you see, it's, it's very important when, when you feel like it might be um, weak, as I said, or, or, or humble, you know, like knitting, uh, to think not only of what it does for you, but of how showing vulnerability of, and humanity, especially when you are at elevated levels, can do a lot for your um, perception as a leader. Beautiful example of passionate leadership, sustainable and passionate leadership. Thank you so much, Emilia. Thank you.